Um, hello, yeah, I'm Gavin Clark. I'm head of Flash at Special Moves, and um, we're a kind of interactive agency in near Farringdon. We do cool, fun stuff that makes people's lives easier and better, hopefully. And the title of this talk is Wrestling with Personalised Videos on Facebook. And you'll see why I said wrestling later. So just about um, personalised videos, I call them personalised videos, other people might call them something else. Um, this is kind of the kind of, normally on Facebook you'll sign in, it will get some data about you and then it will make changes to the video or add things, add other layers to it to, to change how the video looks or how it behaves. So an interesting one I saw recently was this one for Notch of Deutschland, which is a kind of the outer limits in Germany. And um, it was started off with quite innocently with um, some schoolgirls. They're talking on Skype and um, as they would, they're obsessing about you and how beautiful you are. And um, it's, uh, it's taken your date of birth, so it knows what your star sign is. And it says, I'm Capricorn. So it says, yeah, it's a Capricorn. And then one of them's like, oh my God, I can't believe it. I'm a Capricorn too. And um, then one of them's got a tattoo of you, and that's still quite innocent, until the one at the bottom is like, actually, he's right here now. And um, then it cuts to her, and she's got all your photos um, in her room. She's made a love heart out of your blood, it looks like, over in the corner. <laughs> and um, you're actually in a sack, which you can just see in the bottom right there, <laughs> wriggling, and um, she's just staring at you. And um, yeah, so that was nice. Um, <laughs> quite scary actually. And then there are loads more things that do that. So there's Lost in Valsinestra, which again is very scary. Some kids go to a hotel, get abducted, and um, yeah, I think they get kidnapped and never seen again. Um, you probably saw Take This, Take this Lollipop, which was uh, kind of like the build up. There's someone that's been stalking you for ages. They've got lots of pictures of you and information about you. And then they're just getting out of the car at the end to abduct you, I think. So that's another nice one. Um, but special moves. <laughs> We've gone for the more light-hearted approach. Um, so we've done, we've done two main personalised videos. The first one is called Mess With Misfits, the Misfits show on Channel 4. So in this, you're like a nightclub promoter or something like that, and you've put posters everywhere, you've graffitied all over the place, and they've got to clean it all up. And that takes your kind of your name, your profile picture, and you can see it's graffitied on there, and you've got your photo. And it's also another interesting one, it's got your, it gets your sex as well. So if you're male, then the female, one of the female cast members from Misfits says, oh, he's well fit. And then um, if you're female, then one of the male members said, oh, I would, or something, you know, disgusting or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> and the other, one, uh, the other one we've done is, uh, that I'm going to be focusing more on, is for WrestleMania, the WWE Entertainment. And um, this, the kind of, I won't give away the story because it's pretty good, um, but you're, um, you're, a, you're a guy, you're, you've taken over someone's uh, tag team partner, basically. And it just takes your, kind of your profile picture and your name, but it does a lot of nice stuff with it. So, to do this, we have to decide the technology. Getting the data out of Facebook, all of that kind of stuff, I'm sure you've all done it lots before already, so I won't bore you with that, because it is quite boring. But making it look good is really hard, especially when you're making it look good at runtime, as we were. So. Um, We've got to do all this, it's got to start, get your Facebook data, start the video instantaneously, and it's got to all be personalised straight away. So that is the hard part. So to do this, we've got a kind of workflow um, that I'm going to explain now. So we have the shoot, and the shoot where you're getting the content that you're going to personalise later is actually really, really important. There's lots of things you need to be aware of there. Then you've got the video work. Now the video work, we have a really good video guy at Special Moves called Costas, who couldn't be here tonight. Um, but um, it's, it's, we, we, rather than using After Effects or something like that, we use Shake, which is kind of a more Hollywood production company kind of thing. So in between there, because Shake doesn't integrate with Flash very well, we need some kind of passing layer, and then Flash is where the magic happens at the end. Um, so the shoot, Costas, uh, we got a phone call on a Friday night, and then on Sunday morning Costas flew to Hollywood, which was nice for him, um, to kind of look over the shoot and make sure that everything was usable because he had to make it work when he got back on Monday. So that was him uh, doing lots of sightseeing, not much work. And the shoot, here was the shoot. The shoot was kind of muscly men walking around with um, green bits of card behind them or holding green bits of card, green bits of card up there and that kind of thing. And 
I'm sure you know how like green screen type things works, but the, the interactive content goes in the green areas. And we had to make uh, Santino here on the right hand side. He was wearing a green t-shirt, so obviously not very experienced. So we had to make him change into a red on the day. So things to be aware of when you're at the shoot, so what Costas was looking for are things like warping and bending. So when you're holding up a bit of card, we didn't have the time or the budget to track the points in 3D. So we're just pinning the top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. So if they pick up a piece of card and it warps all over the place, we're not tracking the points in 3D. So it'd be very hard to make something look realistic behind there. Um, another thing, another problem is the kind of the lighting and the other virtual effects. So um, there's lots of glare. So there was one point, there's one scene with a television that you'll see later and we we're trying to get the TV in the shoot but it wasn't really working. Loads of glare comes off a TV screen, whatever we did. So in the end they just cut out a bit of green foam, stuck a bit of green foam to the wall and then later Costas put a TV where the green foam was. <laughs> <laughs> so that was that. And then also he's got to watch out for complexity. So um, lots of, so they're, they're picking up a bit of paper and then putting it down, picking up, putting it down, walking in front of the words, like make sure hands don't go in front of things because hands are really hard to chop out nicely when you're in the video, video section later. So this is a program that Costas was using, it's called Shake, it's like a Hollywood thing that they use for Lord of the Rings and all that kind of stuff. And the general flow, on the right, instead of layers and things like that, you have nodes which are there on the right hand side. Basically the footage starts at the top, goes through this kind of tree of nodes which do various effects based on various bits of logic and then comes out the bottom with all the fancy effects applied. So it's a bit easier to use, the workflow is much faster than if you're using After Effects or something that's layer based, according to our video guy. <laughs> okay, so the video effects flow, this is what the footage looked like when they were doing, so they're very good actors because they've got to imagine something's there and it's just green. I don't know how they did it. Um, so that's what it start, that's, what, that's the footage we got from them basically. Um, and when we, were, when we were over there we actually used all their lighting guys, sound guys, film guys, so it looked exactly like all the other videos that they do on their website. Because if we took our own people over there, the style would be completely different, the lighting would be different, it wouldn't really fit into the whole experience. So we wanted to get something like this in that green rectangle that we see there. And basically the premise is that these two lovely ladies behind here have been writing little love notes and stuff about you and not him as they used it. I think one of them was his girlfriend as well. So he was really disappointed. So first off, we key out all the green and basically whatever is black here becomes transparent. And Shape's really good at this. It keeps all the kind of highlighting and everything over the top there so we can keep all the highlights as the folders moving around and things like that. Then afterwards we can put something behind. <laughs> um, so everything that was black now becomes transparent and in the layer underneath the video we can put a picture of a goat. And the picture of the goat will look at you and that's that. But the picture of the goat is not moving with the folder or anything like that. It's just a layer that's behind the video. So after that we have to track the corners of the video. So Shake's really good at this. It tracks quite a lot of it on its own and then you have to go in and adjust the points frame by frame afterwards. And then when you put that um, kind of WWE lovey hearts picture behind the video, you get something like this, which looks pretty good. But of course, we don't have your name in there yet. So to do that, we had to make a green rectangle that was going to be the text field in Flash. And then this green rectangle, Costas went in and tracked separate points for that. And um, then we could put a bitmap of your name in, which is pretty nice, with rocks as well, because you rock. And, um, that still looks a little bit fake, so Costas is loads, loads more work, but it was really boring, so I actually deleted it all earlier today. And loads of stuff went on, and it ended up looking really good, just like that. So after we've done all that work in Shake, and Costas made all his layers, and Photoshop, and everything like that, um, you can see that that's quite an intensive workflow. So a Flash developer or something like that isn't really going to be able to redo that. I mean, we had two weeks to do this entire thing. Two weeks, one video guy, one developer. So the one Flash developer, there were eight scenes that had interactive bit of content, bits of content in. They weren't really going to get that done. And if we had given it for them to do in two weeks, they would have made it feature complete, which would have looked a bit like that, probably. <laughs> um, so it was really good to have a video guy there and let him use the tools that he's really good at using and then we can handle what to do with all the data that it pumps out afterwards. 
So once, we've, once he's added in all the tracking nodes, where we're tracking like the top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right, of all those rectangles moving around, when you export them from a shake, they look like this. So in Flash, that's quite hard to pass. And we thought, you know, what's the point in passing that every time at runtime anyway? We might as well convert it to something that Flash can, we can compile into Flash. So we built a C++ app. Uh, of course, as you do, just a bit of C++. And um, so that takes in a configuration file, which I'll show you in a sec. Those shake outputs, these things here. So basically that's the frame number, the X, the Y, and the correlation, which is how sure shake is that that point is correct. Um, and then so track, you see track, track name, track one there, that's the top left of the first thing. So. There were so many, there was, this file was absolutely huge, about 300 kilobytes of text. And then you could also add other effects, blur and color. So we produce a kind of, almost like a DSL for this. So you can see here, this is the configuration file for the C++ app. So you space the 233 means nothing happens that we care about for 233 frames. And then on 234th frame, we want to load in WWE03, which is one of these files. And then at frame one from two, three, two, three, four, we're going to put newspaper blur three, and then the next frame, newspaper blur two. So these were assets that Costas had already produced that were already in the Flash application. And these keys here, like picture newspaper blur one, could also reference your name. So further down, you can see notepad name blur two, which is your name from Facebook, brought into Flash, turned into a bitmap, then blurred a bit so that we could actually put it into the interactive video. So when that C++ app had finished, it made something like this, which is a bit of ActionScript 3. I don't know if there's any ActionScript developers here. Yeah, two. <laughs> oh, three. Marlon. Oh, it's four. Wow. Um, so um, you can see here, basically, this is frame number 829. There are three images on this interactive image on this frame. There's the TV that Cost had made that's going in place of the green bit of foam. There's the name background, which had a kind of glowing effect across it. And then there's your actual name there as well. And then underneath here, these are all the points, the top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right, for each element in that scene. Cool, so now we get to the result, and you can see what I've been talking about, perhaps. No? <laughs> there we go. Okay. There we have it. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. It's good. That's the good stuff. Which one's me? Yeah. All right. Slideshow from current slide. OK, so that was quite good. There was an applause, a round of applause, and a little bit of cheering. But I think that was my friends from Special Moves over there. So, <laughs> but um, yeah, so. It turned out that um, it went down really well with all the WWE community. Kids love seeing themselves with all their heroes, basically. They, do, they, are, they are heroes, and so people started playing around with it. They changed their profile picture to Charlie Sheen, and Charlie Sheen was the next wrestler. Um, and then they tried their dog. So their dog is a new WWE superstar, and then there were loads of these on forums everywhere. There's the guy that plays for 
that used to play for Columbia, whose hair looks like a pineapple. He's in there, there's people with skull masks, looking really rock and roll and stuff like that. Um, so loads and loads of people were playing around with things like this, and we even got called geniuses through WWE, who took all the credit, obviously. Um, so yeah, in the end, it was on for three weeks. It got 300,000 views and 40,000 people shared it on Facebook, which was a pretty good result that everyone was quite happy with. But it wasn't all good. So there were a few things that, didn't, that weren't so good looking back. So we found out, because everyone was changing their Facebook profile, people were changing their name and things like that, actually, we should have just allowed them to upload their own images and add their own text. So that would have been very easy to do and would have, you know, people would have enjoyed that a lot more. There was a dependency on one platform. Was you, I think you've all probably found this, that you have these things that you make on the Facebook app for you know, a, couple of, a couple of weeks or something, and then, but you're not paid to maintain them. And then one year later, they don't work anymore because the OAuth has changed or the API has changed and stuff like that. So it would be better if we'd implemented the thing like people uploading their own images and data. It wouldn't just end when the Facebook API changed. And it was quite hard to share. People were actually handicamming it, playing on their computer, and then handicamming themselves doing a commentary and then uploading that to YouTube when we could have just given them a little embeddable player, but we didn't really have the budget for that. It was good. People in the client loved it. The results we were quite proud of. We got a really good solid process worked out, how to integrate Shake and other professional tools with Flash, it was good. And the one really good bit that I thought from it was it was better because of Facebook. So we hadn't just stuck it on Facebook for no reason at all, just to put it as a Facebook app. It was actually better because of that. You could click one button and all your images and data and everything were in there and they actually enhanced the experience, which takes me to the end. So quite a lot of the time when we make Facebook's app now, People, we forget that people are on Facebook to have fun and to socialise. So that WWE video is fun and people share it and they want to share with their friends. That's what people actually want to do on Facebook. They don't read, no one leaves re like reviews saying, oh, that's great, I can't believe they put that brochure website in a Facebook app. That's really, really good. Like, <laughs> so but I think quite often we forget, whenever a client comes up to you and says, we're going to put it in Facebook, you should be asking them, why are you going to put it in Facebook? What's the point? Because um, quite a lot of the time, I think now, we're using Facebook for... It, people aren't there to look at pictures of not Nikon camera lenses and stuff like that. And also, don't be put off doing something because it's been done already. So those personalised videos, they've been done all over the place. Loads of people have done them. But, you know, it, doesn't, it shouldn't stop you doing it. The, the story changes every time. It's still really good fun. You can make a new process. It's fun to develop. So don't just, like, try and make a new idea every time. You can still make an idea that's already been done even better. And here is one of my favourite quotes from the, that, we, that we found on Twitter, I think, maybe, or maybe something else. Um, it's just really nice that when you make something, you forget that to, to actual users, like to people that use computers all the time but don't know how it works, it's actually absolutely amazing. <laughs> like, this guy is absolutely overjoyed. And there are people on YouTube, like, uh, like screaming, like, ah, oh! and you could hear them, they were, because they were handicamming it, you could hear them giggling in the background, like, as they were watching it along, it was awesome. So, yeah, that's it. Any questions? <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, how do you think? All right, we have time for a few questions. Um, <laughs> okay, so just curious to get a good, good example. Um, it was it was low. I mean, we had we didn't have very long to do. We had three weeks to do the whole thing. Was it under five k? Over five k? It was over five k. Below fifty. Uh, well, you know, it was over that as well. Um, but but it was it was still a low budget. We still had we it was enough budget that we could have two people, um, one video guy, one developer, a bit of a producer. Uh, and we had to fly to Hollywood, so that bumped the cost up massively. There were, you know, business class isn't cheap. So, um, Costas is a very, very demanding man. Uh, there's lobsters and things everywhere and things. But I'm a project management consultant, so you know, for me, that's the bottom line. Oh, uh, okay. So it's just money, money, money. Um, <laughs> it was a pretty, pretty good result for just one video guy, one developer, 
two weeks of solid work. Not like, you know, I think they went home before midnight one Wednesday or something. So I think it was a pretty good, it was a pretty good thing. It was cheap. Cheap as chips. Come to us. <laughs> Any more questions out there? Just raise your hand. Hi there, I'm Mike from Gamma. I just noticed in the program you said that Flash is a dying technology. <laughs> and all that stuff. But how do you think that Flash is going to decline a Flash if it is even happening? Is going to affect the way you do personalized videos in, in, some, in, in the future of special news? Um, yeah, well, I mean, it, it, will, it will affect us quite a lot. I mean, at the moment, if you wanted to do that, you couldn't do it with any other technology, really. Um, if you wanted to have a video playing with a picture that you just got from a web request underneath it, and then some blur filters and colour adjustments on top and things like that, you wouldn't be able to do that in any other technology. And I don't think you will be able to for a couple of years. So it's not going to affect us for long, but I mean, we are, we're looking at other technologies. We do lots of, I don't just, I'm head of Flash, but I'm not stupid. So <laughs> um, I, I do, I do a lot of work in lots of other technologies as well. I, 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 recently I've been doing more JavaScript and HTML than I have Flash. And we're also working on um, uh, a couple of Air for mobile apps as well, which uh, the performance has improved dramatically. I know everyone tried it out at first and it was like a dog, but now it's actually pretty usable. So I think Flash does have a future. It's just not going to be every single brochure site you see like it was in the past five years or so. Any more questions? We have time for one more for the break. All right, and I'll sneak in here just a really quick one. Mm -hmm. I thought it was fascinating, really, really good work. Um, what I was curious about is you mentioned something about users like um, you know taping the video themselves. I guess what I got from that is that you weren't storing any of these videos. It's just happening in real time. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of like a one-time uh, experience. And then they couldn't then, let's say, post the video to YouTube or something. Mm -hmm. And was the, um, I guess the concern there was um, budget for storage. Like it just would have been a lot of storage to save those videos. Basically, yeah. I mean, we would have stored, um, we would have only had to store their name and their, um, their profile picture and then it, like maybe their date of birth or something and then just we would be able to use that metadata to generate the video every time it genuinely it just was a budget thing we didn't have enough budget for a back-end developer and the storage and as you saw 300,000 people viewed it so it's not you know it's quite a it's quite a big job so yeah we just didn't have the budget we would love to have had people embedding it on their blogs and websites and everything like that so it was just a budget thing really cool all right thank you very much Gavin. Cheers.